These pictures from captured German film of an actual air duel between a Spitfire and a Messerschmitt tell their own story. This Spitfire pilot did not know his acrobats as well as his enemy. One brave Allied flyer will never have another chance to learn. It's too late to learn when you start playing for keeps. That's why acrobatics are essential to every military pilot. Here's an American pilot off to practice acrobatics. Let's see what he must remember to do. Before taking off in a dual control airplane, the pilot must fasten the safety belt in the other cockpit Release the controls and check the airplane for loose objects which might cause trouble. Then he enters his own cockpit and checks that. He fastens the safety belt, making sure that it is secure and snug. There he goes, ready to practice the maneuvers which someday may help him shoot down his enemy. Because altitude is lost during most maneuvers, the safe pilot will climb well above the established limit. Easiest to perform and fundamentally a basic maneuver on which more difficult acrobatics depend is the normal loop. When the loop is well done, the airplane outlines a nearly perfect circle in the sky. As the pilot noses down to begin his loop, he picks an aiming point, like this road. As he pulls up into his climb, he must keep his wings level and not fall off to either side. Coming out, he picks up the aiming point again and levels off. This time, we are going to show you all the actions involved in making a loop. Pick an aiming point or any other definite object. Move the stick forward and open up the throttle for the dive. This dive gives the airplane the speed it needs. When the airplane is traveling fast enough, move the throttle to the full advanced position and ease way back on the stick. Keep it back to start climbing. Increased pressure on the stick keeps the airplane on the arc of the circle. When approaching the peak of the loop, we hold the picture to show the position of the wing against the horizon. This position must be checked until you're sure the airplane is level. As soon as the airplane starts down, when there is no danger of stalling, retard the throttle to keep the engine from over revving. When coming out of the loop, the airplane must still be headed for the aiming point. Advance the throttle to climb to the original altitude and then push the stick forward to resume normal flight. In performing the loop, here are the points of common errors. Failure to attain sufficient speed on the dive before the climb is started. Too much back pressure on the stick during the climb. This may lead to a stall. Retarding the throttle too early. This makes the airplane fall out of the loop. And lastly, errors in rudder use at any point in the loop. This results in failure to maintain the flight path in a vertical plane. When the stick is in neutral position, the airplane is in level flight and your line of sight is on the horizon. To climb, apply back pressure to the stick, which raises the elevator. In this position, the resultant slipstream pressure is down, which pushes the tail down and lifts the nose up above the horizon. The pilot's line of sight also comes above the horizon, and he knows the airplane is climbing. So, conversely, forward stick lowers the elevators, and the resultant slipstream pressure is up. Now, the pilot's line of sight is below the horizon, and the airplane is diving. A neutral stick will hold the plane at a constant angle of glide, while back pressure will return the airplane to level flight, which can be maintained by returning the stick to neutral and centering the controls. 
When the airplane is flying straight ahead and the rudder is neutral, the nose remains on one point of the horizon. To change direction to the left, rudder pressure is applied which will force the tail to the right, yawing the plane to the left. Right rudder pressure, on the other hand, moves the airplane back along the horizon to the right. By neutralizing the rudder, the airplane once again is made to fly straight ahead. In considering the third set of controls, the ailerons, it can be seen that stick pressure to the pilot's left forces the left aileron up, causing a downward force on the plane's left wing. The right aileron goes down, raising the right wing. Thus, the airplane would tend to roll about its longitudinal axis. Contrary-wise, stick pressure to the pilot's right forces the left aileron down and the left wing up. Inversely, the right wing goes down. Now, if we were to cause the airplane to roll on its side in a vertical position so that the wings no longer support the airplane, continuing until the airplane is flying on its back, different problems of control effect will arise. The most important thing to remember is that such maneuvers can only be correctly performed by complete coordination of controls. If, for instance, we wish to roll counterclockwise, we apply left pressure to the ailerons and the rudder. This coordination of control causes a motion to the left. As the airplane approaches the vertical position, this continued left rudder would cause the airplane to dive off to the left. To counteract this tendency, right or top rudder must be applied to hold the nose up. This must not be a sudden movement, but a blended change instead. The beginning application of left rudder and ailerons is just what we would have done for a simple turn to the left. Now to arrest this turning action, we must also apply forward stick pressure for elevator action. As it is now approaching the same relative location the rudder has in normal flight, the elevator deviation will cause the airplane to react as the rudder usually does. Note that the flapping of the elevators in this vertical position is exactly like that of a rudder in normal flight. The continued application of these controls will cause the airplane to rotate further. Let us examine the situation at the moment of inverted flight. Compare the position of the control surfaces to that of the airplane in normal flight. You'll find that the ailerons and rudder are the same as if the plane were right side up. The elevators in this position serve now to keep the airplane from nosing down. But from the pilot's upside down point of view, he is applying right rudder and forward stick. Let's continue our roll now. As the airplane approaches the vertical position again, once more top rudder must be applied, but now it is left rudder. At 90 degrees, the roll is nearing its completion, and you can see that the pilot uses left stick and rudder as he did at the start. As the airplane again approaches the upright position, and normal flight is resumed, the forward stick pressure is released, and both ailerons and rudder are neutralized. None of these were sudden control movements. All changes were affected by blending the pressures from one position to another. Acrobatic maneuvers cannot be correctly performed without perfect coordination of the surface control. Here is the slow roll, well done. Note how the nose comes up slightly and the airplane rolls over on its back and then continues around again. It is a true lateral roll dominated by aileron control. Keep the nose up during a slow roll. If the maneuver is properly executed, the nose of the airplane circles on the horizon throughout the roll. Stop the roll when the horizon is level. To begin this maneuver, ease the stick to the side to start the roll. Apply an increasing amount of top rudder to keep the nose up. As the airplane approaches the inverted position, neutralize the rudder controls and press the stick forward. As the airplane continues to roll around, apply top rudder again. Ease off to neutralize both stick and rudder as normal flight position is approached. This stops the roll and enables you to resume level flight. This ribbon path of flight shows the points of common errors in the slow roll. Most common is an error in orientation. 
This occurs when the airplane is not rotated about a definite position. Failure to use top rudder in the vertical positions of the roll always causes trouble. Failure to hold the stick well over to the side throughout the roll also spoils this maneuver. In a snap roll, the airplane rotates one full turn about a horizontal axis, as in a fast tailspin. Keep the nose up for the snap roll. And bring the airplane out with the horizon level. To perform a snap roll, the stick is pulled rapidly all the way back. At the same time, full rudder is given to start the airplane rolling. Use the aileron slightly if necessary. When nearing the level position, opposite controls are used to bring the roll to a stop. Since the airplane lost airspeed in the maneuver and is near stalling, the nose is lowered before resuming normal flight. In making snap rolls, the more common errors which may spoil the maneuver include too sudden and extreme use of the controls, too high speed during any part of the maneuver, and starting the recovery too late. In the half roll and reverse, the nose is pulled up just as in a slow roll. Then the airplane is rolled over into the inverted position, held there momentarily, and then rolled back in the opposite direction. Remember, first roll the airplane to the inverted position. The horizon should be level. Hold it momentarily, and then roll back. Anticipate the return to normal flight by stopping the maneuver when the horizon is level. To make a half roll and reverse, the ailerons are used to roll the airplane over. Top rudder must be used to keep the nose up in a vertical position. Neutralize the controls as the airplane approaches an inverted position, keeping the stick forward to hold the nose on the horizon. Now move the stick to the opposite side to start the airplane rolling back. Again, use the top rudder to hold the nose up. Bring the stick and rudder back to neutral as the airplane moves into normal position. In the half roll and reverse, common errors include failure to orient the roll around a definite point, failure to apply top rudder in the 90 degree position, and failure to hold the stick forward in the inverted position. The vertical reverse is a quick change from a steep turn in one direction to a steep turn in the other. The airplane movements are rapid but controlled. In the vertical reverse, keep the nose of the airplane on the horizon through the initial steep turn. Then swing the nose up, snap over, and hold the nose on the horizon during the reverse turn. Level the wings with the horizon at the end of the maneuver. Here's the action. First, put the airplane into a steep turn. Then apply firm opposite rudder and pull the stick back and over in the same direction as the rudder. The airplane noses up and snaps over. Apply top rudder to keep the nose up. Then return the airplane to level flight. Common errors in the vertical reverse are starting the reverse too soon before the turn is well begun, continued back pressure on the stick after the peak of the maneuver has been reached, and violent movement of the stick, which may result in loss of control. In an Immelman, the airplane reverses its direction completely. The maneuver begins with a longer dive than that used for a loop. The airplane actually goes through the first half of a loop and the last half of a slow roll.
This shows how the dive is held to gain speed. Then pull the airplane up in a half loop to the inverted position, keeping the wings level. Then roll out to the normal flight position. As in the loop, the Immelman begins when the stick is pressed forward for the preliminary dive. But the stick is not pulled back until a 20% higher speed is reached. The stick is pulled back and held there during the entire climb. And the wings are kept level. When the inverted position is reached, the stick is pressed forward and to one side to begin the half roll. Top rudder is applied throughout the vertical position in order to keep the fuselage level. Finally, the airplane is put back into level flight. The maneuver will not be a successful Immelman if these common errors are made. Failure to orient the maneuver toward a definite ground objective. Insufficient speed, which may result in complete failure. And failure to maintain horizontal and level flight during the half roll. Thorough familiarity with all acrobatic maneuvers is a necessary preliminary to actual combat experience. The simple loop, basic for timing and coordination in the use of throttle and elevator. The half roll and reverse, necessary in the development of a fine sense of timing. The Immelman, the lifesaver of the First World War, and still the best maneuver to reverse course and gain altitude simultaneously. The snap roll depended on split-second timing and control. The slow roll, essential practice for precision and aileron control. The vertical reverse, used instinctively to avoid collision or gunfire. These acrobatics may not be used as complete maneuvers during actual combat, but the precision, timing, and control must be familiar and instinctive reactions when you're up against the enemy. When you practice acrobatics, you are preparing for the real thing. <laughs>